Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and 3.19 was yesterday released to the open PTU, and thus NDA has been lifted, and thus it's time for the essentials video on the changes that are in it. CIG has given 3.19 a relatively short time in Evocati, particularly in comparison to 3.18, and it appears that this is reflecting a determination to have it ready for live release for Invictus launch week, so that any new ships and features released for Invictus will be added to the 3.19 branch rather than needing a 3.18.3 release to hold them. I suspect that the one thing that most users were hoping for from 3.19 release would be a quantum improvement in the stability and performance over all the problems that we've seen in 3.18. And at least at the moment, it is an incremental improvement, not a massive improvement, but every bit helps. Number one, additional UI improvements for new players. This is not yet complete, but you'll start to see hints of it in this little area here where it starts to show suggestions about how to interact context aware where you are and what you're doing right now. This is turned on and off by this option in the user interface. And we should be seeing a lot of improvement on this in the future. This is just the starting point. Number two, commodity redistribution. This is not a big flashy new feature of 3.18, and in fact, it is likely only beginning to be introduced in 3.19, and we will be seeing a lot of tuning about it. But it will be generating a lot of gameplay as industrial-focused players figure out the new landscape, because it is a new landscape. Now each planet in the Stanton system has their own specialization in terms of commodities and mining. Trading is essentially moving a commodity from a point of supply into a point of demand. And since when the distribution of materials was first set, there was only Crusader, every commodity had a point of supply within Crusader and a point of demand within Crusader because Crusader was all there was. When Arcorp, Hurston, and Microtech were added, they followed the same pattern rather than rebalance the whole system, which is what is happening now. Now, for example, Hurston and its moons have iron in great abundance and the other planets do not. So expect a lot of interplanetary travel to be needed connecting the lowest price with the highest one. Number three, mining redistribution and a new UI. When coming upon a cluster of rocks, you are likely to find a greater variety of sizes and difficulties among them. In addition, there is a different UI which keeps the most essential information central on the screen and has the additional help of giving up front a prediction of whether a rock is easy, medium, and impossible, saving you time. In addition, the easy rocks are already harvestable without cracking by an unmodified prospector. However, in testing with an unmodified prospector, the majority of rocks were displayed as impossible and indeed were. So expect that gadgets and modules are going to be more mandatory and less optional going forward. Number four, salvage missions. These are found in the contract manager of your mobile glass in the category of, yes, salvage. You pay a fee and they are giving coordinates to a wreck. The ones I was able to test were 1,000 credits and gave you access to a single seat ship near a Lagrange point. I hope that larger ones will be available as reputation is gained because a reclaimer crew is not going to be satisfied with just the 300i to go after. Go there, salvage, and then abandon the mission without any penalty when you're done. Having practiced with large ships during the last PTU, I learned that salvaging small ships has an additional challenge, and that is that they're easy to bump. And once you bump them, they're going to start moving and spinning, and good luck with being able to do pretty much anything with them after that. Number five, tractor beam changes. Tractor beams now have two modes, alternated with the B key. The first is traversal mode which is what you use to pull yourself around in space by shooting at something large and heavy. The second is detach mode, which continues CID tradition of naming things in confusing ways. Detach mode is what you use to move things around, whether you've detached them from something or not. I mean, why would you think of moving an incapacitated colleague to a safe place for healing by using detach mode? But you do. It would have been better named being called move mode or carry mode, but indeed it is also the mode you use when detaching things, and since that is the thing they are working on right now, it gets called detach mode, because developers do get myopic on what is being worked on right now. But the ability to detach and reattach things is significant, certainly significant enough to be its own item, which means number six, Weapons and Module Salvage. Before you can detach things from ship those, even derelicts, there is an additional first step. You have to go to the pilot's chair and use the port unlock command, 
which is currently not bound to any key. Some cockpits do have a port unlock switch on the dashboard, most do not. Anyway, once the ports have been unlocked, you can simply grab the item with the tractor beam, in detach mode of course, and move them over to the hold of your ship. In this example, I was able to detach one missile and two M5A guns. At the weapon shop, the missiles did not bring much, but the ship guns brought a much better price. Since the hull of the 350 only had 1.8 SCU of hull metal, the most profitable part of the salvage contract was the guns. Not to mention the modules, which I had forgotten also grab. Number seven, Hurston Smog. These last items are purely visual, but nonetheless, quite satisfying. The first is that there has been a new cloud layer added to Hurston, one close to the ground rather than at altitude. This layer really emphasizes the polluted character of Hurston. Not only that, it increases the drama of coming upon Lorville and seeing it emerge from the haze. When I described in a prior video a moment of magnificence in 3.19, it was seeing the new Lorville on a daytime approach emerging from the haze. Which brings up, of course, the other change. Number eight, the new Lorville skyline. Yes, I still maintain that the big hulking Hurston Dynamics headquarters should be more dominant than it is to match the society, but from a visual standpoint, the new Hurston skyline is indeed impressive, way more dramatic, and a joy to fly over and through the channels and canyons. If I could make any suggestion at all, it would be to bring back the spaceport boundary signs, or some new version of them. Lorville Pryor had the one advantage over the other landing zones of being able to find the spaceport without any Pryor's secret knowledge about what to look for. So what I would suggest is not simply to put back the spaceport landing signs, but to think of a universal solution, such as a vertical beacon, and apply it as a standard to all spaceports in all landing zones. Number 9. Lorville Ground Level Views Yes, this is essentially doubling up on the prior point, but the experience of traveling across the ground in Lorville used to be pretty dull. Far more dull than any of the other transportation methods on the other landing zones. Now there's really a reason to look out the windows. Vistas open up and close. Plazas and monuments appear and disappear, etc. This sort of window dressing may not seem important, but since, like any RPG, managing the time to do things is important, it should neither be too fast nor too slow, and the time added should be kept as interesting as possible, which the new transit experience helps greatly with that. And that's 9 for 3.19. It may not be regarded as the patch that changed everything, the way 3.18 was, or that 4.0 will be, and so it's a nice welcome arrival between those massive reworks. But it is hardly an inconsequential patch. Just the ability to pull and attach ship modules and weapons as salvage and field upgrades is a big deal. Now for an update on our giveaways. First, we have the 10,000 subscriber thank you giveaway for the LTI Hull C, the colossal cargo container carrying craft to begin away when the CEO is live, and the big annual ship giveaway for the winner's choice of the Galaxy Complete, the massive modular mining moving medical machine, or the Banu Big Box Bargain Bazaar known as the Merchantman. One entry per video for both giveaways. Just be a member and be entered automatically. Otherwise, be a subscriber and comment somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the thing I thought CIG named in a confusing way. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.